So, what do you say we uh, work on our straps, finish up our lovely pink Cadillac Lola, and then move on to uh, another exciting project, whatever that might be. So, you're going to need a few things for your straps. This is how I do it. And uh, it's kind of a compilation of what Margaret taught us and uh, a few other people. But this is what I've been using lately, and uh, I like it. So these are my Lola straps. I cut them to 28 inches. Uh, of course, we do ours differently. We're going to add ours to connectors and such. We don't sew them on. So 28 inches and um, 4 inches wide. Having a 2-inch ruler is helpful just to draw that center line down uh, the strap. And you're also going to need some uh, half-inch double-sided leather tape. You're going to need some kind of large uh, quilting clips. They leave uh, less dense than the little ones, but they all will go away eventually. Uh, a uh, strip of Cordura. This is basically it's a very tough piece of uh, material that will, will prevent your straps from uh, stretching out. Just adds more stability to them. I'm all about stability lately. Um, you're gonna need your pasta roller. Well, that's what I use. I'm sure there's more fancy tools to keep your strap flattened. A little pokey tool. This is a uh, metal chopstick, but they're my favorite, so I have probably be a dozen ha hanging around here. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to take your double-sided tape, and we're going to place it at the top of the strap and we're going to leave about a uh, three-quarter inch gap on one side so the tape's not going all the way. You'll see it on the other side. So just stop about three-quarters of an inch away. Clip it. Smooth it out. You just want to smooth everything because sometimes things get wrinkled and or bunched up. So smooth it out. And now we're going to take off this tape, which usually pops right off. But of course not when I'm trying to do you guys. Okay. Pop that off. We got our cordura. Let me try to get this more. And we're putting this right on top of that DST. You're leaving about a sixteenth of an inch, if that. You're just not going to go straight to the top of the vinyl. So just pop it on there. Don't pull it. I hear my computer going off. Probably somebody in the group texting me. You guys. <laughs> just kidding. All right. And then uh, go all the way to the end. Again, smooth it out. You can even use your little roller guy if you want to. Every time you do a little extra step like that, it can turn out all the more nicer. And then we're going to take another piece of half inch DST and we're going to put it down the, the center of the line that we drew, also a quarter of an inch from the edge. Because we're going to be turning the edge under itself and we don't want to have DST or tape in the way. So, cut that. So you've seen this, this tutorial, I'm sure, but uh, now you see it live. Actually, this is kind of, I'm gonna fix this because I can tell it's puckering. So, no puckers. I had, I had it pulled too tight, so no reason for that. Mm -hmm. So now, just like typical fourfold, we're going to remove the tape. And we're going to take the center of the one side and fold it to the center, but not quite to the center. You want to leave about a sixteenth of an inch away, if that, just so that when you actually fold it all together, there's room for that uh, crease to... Uh, fold into itself. So 
I'm sure you all know that already. So we're just affixing the vinyl to the one half of the double-sided tape all the way down until there's that open area. And then we'll do that on this one. That DST is sticky stuff, but I'm in charge. That's what I always tell myself at least. Okay. And then we're going to turn it around and bring up this side. And the same idea. We start in the center. And that doesn't that really matters, but just bring it up. And that little piece of uh, cordura is really going to give your straps some body, number one, and strength. And uh, it just it looks nice too. I like the way it kind of has a little bit of a poof, more body than just some flat pieces of vinyl put together. I think uh, Peggy taught me all about the benefit of Cordura, putting it in strips, and ever since she taught me that, I have been sold. So that's our little strap, the first part of it. And then if you want, I like to take your roller, whatever you have, and give it a nice flattening. I just think sometimes this helps with any kind of possible waviness or something. So now, next thing we're gonna do is, and if you've made any of the wristlets, um, like for the clematis, you'll be familiar with this technique. But we're gonna take one end where there's no tape and such. And we're going to fold it back upon itself, just like so. And I'm going to put a couple of clips. And we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew these right sides together about a quarter inch. And you want to backstitch on both the start and the ending seam. Do one more clip. And we'll do the same for this side. You kind of pull away a little bit of the tape. Bring it right sides together. Make sure the tops are aligned, not kitty wampus. It's a technical term for sewing off kilter. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm going to uh, sew this and I'll be back and we'll uh, talk about the next step. Okay, so I have sewn this simple little quarter inch seam on the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim just at an angle on the folded end, just like so. Kind of cut away some of the seam allowance, so the bulk, if you will. And then we're going to fold this in gently. I use our pokey tool to poke out the corner and you don't want to make sure it's kind of straight and not 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 at an angle so that's looks pretty good and then what you do is you're going to now pop this back into the seam just like we're making our four-fold strap but it'll fold in nicely because we've cut away some of the bulk. Oh wait, I forgot to show you an important technique. Wait, before you, after you do that, after you do that, take your scissors and you're gonna cut just a small little V right about there, just that much. And that's gonna help even further getting this to lay nice and flat inside your strap. So now we can poke it in And if you want, use your pokey tool to make it all lay nice. We're aiming for a, uh, a one inch strap, don't forget. So 
should lay nice and if it doesn't manipulate it. That looks pretty good. Use that. And I'm just gonna clip that in place. And that's your that's your finished end of your strap. We're gonna sew it obviously. Um, but it should be having a, a raw edge, having to put, uh, you know, hardware on the end or edge paint. So now we're just going to use our big quilting clips here, and we're going to fold this together. You could use um, double-sided tape, more of it, but, uh, you know, it's not inexpensive, and sometimes it's just one more thing to goo up your machine so if you can avoid using it do so i don't need them i can hold this in place on the machine and just go slow and it's not going to shift so i'm going to come over here to this side we're going to do the same thing we have our little seam that we sew them right sides together we're going to trim the folded edge to get rid of the bulk in there you can see that we don't have any uh, cordura in the way of the seam allowance there. Then we're going to pop that through. Use our pokey stick to get a nice clean edge. That one turned out better. You never know. And then we're going to just trim, just trim the, this like so. And then, just like on the other side, we fold it inside of itself to form a clean, beautiful, no raw edge strap. And use our pokey tool to make it nice. And there's no reason to, uh, you know, if it doesn't look great, go ahead and manipulate it a little bit so that you're happy with it. There's no rush. I always say that, but there really is no rush. It takes a lot longer to fix it. All right, that looks pretty good. So we have our one inch strap on this end. That's looking nice and even there too. Now we can just continue with folding the sides together. Clipping it in place. Like I said, these big guys, these quilting clips, they can clip and pretty much not leave indentations on the vinyl. Again, they'll probably come out, but why bother? Because I like them. You can get them on. I think they're from Clover. I'm sure if you're a quilter, you have them in your stash. So, you know, we all start out start out as quilters before we became bag makers. I bet it's true. All right. So, you can watch paint dry or you can watch me clip bag straps, however. All right, so that's pretty much it. We have our beautiful ends. If you're not happy with them for any reason, now's the time to poke them out a little bit and make them perfect because it's kind of like a one-time shot. Check both sides. Clip more. And then, even though it's probably not very exciting, but I'm going to show you how I sew these on my Juki 1541. And when we're all done, we will have a beautiful strap like this one. And then all we're going to do is put a couple of beautiful buckle guy rivets in there, add our tassel and my Sew Cali tag, and we will have um, Lola done. So it's been a lot of fun teaching you all how to make her. I hope it's been fun for you. All right, back in a flash. Okay, so we are over at my uh, Juki 1541. This is a compound walking foot sewing machine. It um, it really is the bomb diggity. I can sew through just about anything. It's got a huge presser foot lift, as you can see. I can sew through my finger too. I can attest to that. Don't be like me. So um, I have attached here the uh, 
one eighth inch, I think it's one eighth inch uh, edge foot. You can get these in sets of three for both right, left, and then there's three different um, thicknesses. I pretty much just use this one. So I'm on about a 5.5 stitch length on this machine, and I'm going to uh, sew, just sew. This might be boring, but um, people want to see me sew on my 1541. Her name is Joy, by the way. So I name my machines. I know it's kind of odd. Some people don't. I name my machines. This is Joy. The other one's Jack for Jacqueline. So, here we go. And I did confirm that I have a full bobbin before I started this, as we always should. And I'm making sure that the um, edges are lined up. They should be, but my vinyl is... Um, really slick which is, and it's really cool too but it is slippery so I just give it a little guidance as we go you can't see what I'm sewing but trust me it's sewing a strap like we always do over and over again but this machine makes it all the more nicer I also have a, a synchronizer on this machine so that whenever I stop sewing the needle is always in a down position, which is super. This uh, particular servo motor is adapted with what's called a turbo, turbo setting. So if I wanted to, I could fly super, super fast, but I'm not going to because you're watching and then I might mess up. <laughs> okay. And my uh, machine is noisy, but actually it's not the machine, it's the uh, servo. But I kind of like it. It's soothing to me. I get all my machines from uh, Riker Industrial in Phoenix. They do service calls. Major plus. Plus. The shoulder straps on the original Lola were like 14 inches and just seemed tiny to me. So I increased my next ones to 20 and then 22 and now I'm at 28 and 28 is perfect for me. You can add um, D-rings to the side of your Lola bag and then make it be a crossbody, but to me it looks like it was unintentional. Not every bag should be crossbody. But it's pretty cool. The uh, Juki 1541 has a uh, front loading bobbin. So pretty soon it will click and scare the heck out of me, and I'll go like that, like I do every time I wind a bobbin. Just making sure that the edges are staying together. And now we're going to go down the long end. I missed a stitch. We're going to go one more stitch. If you ever miss a stitch, it's easy just since we're in the needles are always down. This is like halfway between off and on the uh, fabric. So you can just adjust it. It's perfect. Now, we can do a little bit faster now that we secured that. I have 
black thread, so I'm going to backstitch over that. But most of the time you want to simply um, you know, cut your threads and bring them to the back or burn them off. Backstitching can look tacky on some lighter fabrics. Looks fine here. And now, just, so that's it. We have our beautiful strap. We're going to go back and uh, I'm going to give it a nice big press. A lot of people say, I know, don't, uh, don't sew down the other end or it will be uh, wobbly. But I think if you do all the steps ahead of time like I showed you, you know, rolling it with the Cordura and uh, it's, it's going to be lovely. Not pretty. This vinyl is uh, from a friend of mine. I hope she's feeling better. Um, so that is it for making the strap. I'll go back to my desk and uh, we'll finish up, put the straps on Lola, give her some uh, finishing TLC. And, and here we are at last. At last. So now, as always, this is how I do my connectors, at least the rivet part, and only until recently because what I was doing in the past was um, putting the straps on the hardware itself, on the hardware, and then putting some double-sided tape to hold it in place, and then having to finagle the leather punch to get the hole right, and sometimes the, the strap would move. It's a small thing, but you know, we, we can do better. So I tried better. So this is what I've been doing lately. Seems to be working. I'll probably change my technique in another month. For now, so take your strap strap end and you're going to fold it over about one and a half inches. So use your grid mat and fold it over one and a half. You can decide which is the good side or the bad side of your strap. It looks identical for me. So, And then you're going to fold it over so it's face down. Take your leather marking pen and mark a center on the one inch mark. And I just eyeball that. Make sure it's all nice and lined up. Take your leather punch and punch the hole. With brute strength. This is a leather punch that uh, my sweet friend Kelly Hall got me. Probably, it'll be two years in January. It's uh, by Springer. This guy is, he is just phenomenal. Springer. If you want one, recommend it. They are not inexpensive, probably about $70, but uh, so worth it. So now you have two holes punched in your strap. Now you're gonna take the other side and do the same thing. Fold it over an inch and a half. And you're gonna use your grid mat. And then flip it so that's right side up, still measured up. Put your hole, your, your dot, right in the center at the one inch line mark. It actually isn't centered, but I know where it is, so. Come right here. Punch the hole. Lovely. I can get it out. And now, Come over to our bag <clears throat> and we're going to, we have our buckle guy rivets. It's the only ones I'm using. I know Tangi's supposed to be pretty good too, but I'm in love with these guys. I uh, just bought a bunch more today. I have $100 of rivets coming my way in a few days and I'm very excited. So you're going to put this through the strap and fold it over. You want to make sure that you have your... Um, strap going the same way on both sides as far as what's open and what's um, what's one side is open one side is closed so look at this guy and it would be the other way so we put this on this side so they match it's a small thing same case on the hardware sometimes like this hardware has um, small screws here and big screws here so you want to make sure that you uh, just are consistent with that so now that I've said that, I'm confused, but let's see. Put this on. And then we 
So how many of you have ever taken this strap and put it by accident on this hardware? That makes for an interesting bag, huh? Yeah. I know we've all done it once. If you haven't, you will. But it's fixable. Everything is fixable. All right. So I'm looking at this. Just to make sure it's going to look the same as the other side. It does. All right. So we take one of our rivets. This is a uh, 9.2 millimeter cap and a 12 point, I forget, 12.7 millimeter post. And you just pop it through. You can feel it pop on. And then we're gonna come make sure your, your, your strap is not a twisted sister. Oh God, I'm dating myself now, huh? Okay, take your rivet. Pop it through. Need a little help, it looks like. Sometimes you can put another piece of vinyl behind the when you're punching these, and that will help it um, secure the, the final punch, if you will. Okay, it's there, it's just not behaving itself. Okay, now we're gonna pop on this other. You can even feel them, hear them snapping, unlike other rivets. They just, they just work. So, all right, so here we have our lovely bag. We make sure before we do anything, that, as far as using the uh, press, that they're all nice and even. I'm sure you know how to use your press. I won't bore you with that, but I will show you this part. Da -da -da -da. The best part, I made a pretty little tassel for her. Of course, I'll be adding my uh, my Soul Kelly tag. But that's it, and she's done. You've all been very patient, and I hope you had fun learning how to make Lola a la Kelly. So this is the pink Cadillac bag going to a new home, and her name was Tracy. So, all right, till next time.